Hey guys, it's time to pick another winner for our t-shirt giveaway. All you had to do to enter to win was just comment marathon down in the comment section like Dad said in last week's video. Um, it looks like we had nine comments down here in the comment section. So let's go to our random number generator and generate the uh, number to pick from. So it looks like number four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Mark M. Comedy Marathon. Congratulations, man. You win a free t-shirt. Uh, just uh, reach out to us with an email and we'll uh, get your uh, size information and stuff and get you one sent out. Congratulations. Trying to get that bolt loose and just snap the top of that shock in half. Well, while we have Beth's Jeep in here, we might as well start in on the uh, lift kit. We got it in, came in uh, yesterday, I think it was. So we might as well put it in and, and uh, have that part done when we get it back from Mike. And that's one less thing we'll have to do. So since I showed you the whole process on Paul's Jeep, putting that in, we'll just do a time lapse and kind of zip through that. So I'm glad we're changing those shocks. I think it was rusted solid up on the top. By the time I got trying to get that bolt loose, it just snapped the top of that shock in half. This thing was a northern vehicle, so some of that exposed non-treated metal is rusty. So anyway, we're putting new shocks on it, so that won't be a problem. The hardest part is just getting them off. So while I was under here installing the rest of this uh, lift kit, I just had one more bolt to put in. I noticed this uh, shock that I guess can help control the steering sway is bent like crazy. I guess it's probably, I would say, a cold part forklift damage. So it's leaking fluid and I'll get, I better get that one of those ordered and install that while I'm under there. Get that ordered, and I got one more bolt put in on the lift kit, and the front is finished. All right, so now that the front of the lift kit is done, you, you can see the difference there between the fender and the tire, and then look at the back. Quite a good difference there. So it's time to start on the back. Hey guys, while I'm doing this uh, lift kit, I thought I'd show you how to install these uh, little pieces in, into the uh, shocks that. Or sometimes hard to do these little pieces right here um, where the bolt holds it up to the tub um, the kit comes with a whole bunch of different little ones of those they're all different sizes for different uh, shocks and different applications because these shocks are kind of a generic 
one that go with all sorts of stuff. So this one is the one that matches our old shop right here. See the length of it's the same. Well, you have to press it in through this bushing like that. And a lot of times that is hard to do. If you don't know what you're, if you haven't done it before or if you don't have a vise. Um, the first thing I do is I take these, the piece that I'm getting ready to put in there and I'm gonna grind down these little points on the outside edge, just enough to where they're not sharp so they don't dig into that bushing. It's a rubber bushing, so let me do that real quick. Okay, so now you can see that they're not sharp like they were on these outside edges as much. So those aren't gonna dig in like this other side. If I forgot and use this other side right here, that would really dig into that rubber, so that's much better. Then we're gonna take a little bit of grease. I like using white lithium grease. I think it's a little bit easier on rubber. And just smear it all in there. Okay. Then you have to get this thing started kind of with your hand. Make sure you use your end that you rounded it off. And just kind of work it around in there until you get it started. Okay, like that. Then you're going to open up your vise and just start it. Try to get it pushed in enough to uh, get it started in the center. Make sure it's going straight because it can still dig in. Pull it out a little bit and then just check and make sure it's not digging into the rubber. So then take a socket and this one is a one and an eighth. You just want something that's going to uh, go onto that metal piece right here. Let the rubber go up inside there and that gives you enough space for when you when you push that this piece here and it goes all the way up inside the socket. So you have to open up your vise some more. So you just push until it bottoms out. It should be bottoming out on the inside of that socket. Okay. Take your socket off. And there it is. And usually you can just push it through by hand the rest of the way. Let's see. But if not, you can use your vise a little bit more. Just put it on the edge of that piece right there. And then push it in the rest of the way. Alright, so there it is. The Jeep is lifted. And I'm glad that's done. The uh, shocks, I'm glad that kit comes with shocks, because look at those. Man, they had, it's just, it's surface rust, but it was gonna get bad pretty soon, so. Glad those are changed. And I've got one more bolt to put in, in the back, that cam lock bolt that uh, hooks the track bar to the uh, axle. So I'll do that, and this part will be done. All right, so a couple things I want to get done today on Beth's Jeep. And one of those is to uh, go ahead and put that new steering damper on the little, little uh, shock looking thing that goes across here. That other one's damaged, I don't know, from a forklift or what, but you remember we took that off a few episodes ago. Um, and we need to put that cover back on. So I want to try to get all the outside stuff done I need to do before it rains here in a couple hours. Back in the shop, we have the 2017 Jeep Wrangler that's the Beth edition. <laughs> so this is the one we just got back from Mike. Uh, it's been completely done on this side. This is the side that was wrecked, if you remember. So yes, it looks just like Paul's, but it is not. She has got some rims ordered and some tires. So when those come in, we'll get those installed. But bodywork is done. And if you remember, this is the interior that we switched to black. This, this is the manual gear shift one. And so all we really need to do on this is we got to put the rock sliders back on and the steps. 
just a few other things, antenna, windshield wipers, decals. Um, but most of this thing's done. This, it's probably a couple days or a couple nights after work's work on it and it'll be finished. Got that step and rocker panel on. That's the only, that's the thing I wanted to get done first because that step is probably the hardest thing I had left to do. It's just a pain because there's a lot of measuring and drilling and stuff. But now let's uh, <clears throat> go ahead and jump on the decals, get all that measured and put on. Then we'll hit the antenna and the wipers. Okay, so the outside of this thing is complete. Got the decals and wipers and antenna and the rock sliders and steps and all that on. So let's go on and jump on the inside and finish these few things in here, like getting this door uh, back on and seats bolted back down. Get the rear seat installed. And I'll be wrapping this thing up. So that is a wrap on this Jeep build. Interior is all back together. Needs to be cleaned up a little bit. All I've got left is tires and wheels. Those might be in a day tomorrow or the next day. So we can put those on. But that's it. It's all back together. And I already have very many screws and bolts left over at all. Well, let's get this thing jacked up. Um, they told me that the tires are in and they need the sensors out of these old ones. So <laughs> I'm gonna jack this thing up and they'll break them down when they get there, get the sensors out. And hopefully the next shot you guys see after we get these off will be us putting the new tires on. And then this thing's done. got all the wheel spacers installed all the way around that's an inch and a half spacer and that'll help us to get these tires out far enough if you don't have that um, we, we found on Paul's Jeep the tire will rub probably right, right in here somewhere so once we put the inch and a half out on Paul's he doesn't get any rubbed anywhere so we got those all installed on this and now for the tires well the tires are here <laughs> Check them out. They are beefy. Dick CPEC rims and tires. 
So let's get those things inside. And as you can see, there's only four. She ordered five and one of them was damaged in shipping. So we gotta try to get that thing sent back and get another one. But uh, I'll put one of the new ones up next to one of the old ones and you can kind of look at the difference between them. Okay, so there's the difference between the two. Old versus new. It's quite a bit. Hopefully I've got the Jeep jacked up high enough to get them on. Hey guys, you may notice that this Jeep has been moved since our last shot. And there's a story behind that. So let me show you by magic of our time-lapse video from what happened. And hopefully you will not laugh. Finally the last step, all I gotta do is get these tires on here. Uh, man, this thing is not wanting to go on. What the heck? I'm gonna jack it up a little more, man. I don't have enough clearance. All right, now I got on there. Uh, man, it's still not wanting to go on there. I'm still not having enough clearance. I'm gonna jack it up some more. All right, now I'm gonna get on there. It's still, what in the world? This thing is still not wanting to go on. I've never seen a tire this hard to get back on. No, they it's surely not the wrong bolt pattern. Five, five, I have. Oh, it's the wrong pattern. Yeah, I take the hub off the other side. Yep, wrong pattern. All right, so guys, so what had happened in that, that we just tried to show you, is that somehow we ended up with the wrong uh, bolt pattern on the new rims. And so by the time we realized that, we already had the new tires on there, everything was balanced. Um, and so as I got ready to put them on there, they just would not fit. So what we had to do was order some adapters to fit the Jeep and the tire. A Jeep is a 5x5 five five on the 2017 Wrangler is a 5x5 five five bolt pattern and the rims we got in were a 5x5.5 five five so these studs on here were just a little bit off I mean just barely and they will not go on that tire so we reordered um, spacers that had adapters built in on them so that uh, they just bolted right on the Jeep and bolted right on the rim and so We've got that on there now, and so everything's gonna work good. Okay guys, now it's the time you've all been waiting for, the price reveal. So this is uh, what we spent on this thing. And that's just like we did on Paul's Jeep, I'm gonna break it down into two parts, what it would cost to rebuild it, just stock and leave it the way it was, and then what best spent on the add-ons, okay? So the Jeep, the purchase price was $13,400, fees $788, and then we had to have this one delivered, if you remember, which was $1,106. So that, that delivery really puts a kink in your budget. Uh, we had to replace the console, change it from automatic to um, manual. When we switched the interiors, that was $65.40. Uh, miscellaneous stuff like decals and uh, just a bunch of little things, $120.47. Paint was $9.94.25. The rock sliders was two eleven forty nine. Lift kit, um, so I'm gonna put that on the second part. Full mats seventy ninety five. The wiring for the trailer twenty six seventy two. License bracket thirty one fifty nine. Bumper, which we ended up using on Paul's, was one ninety five sixty. Uh, fender, we had to buy up there one hundred five. The door and the other bumper and the hitch 833.13 okay so you add all that up and if she would just went stock it would have cost her seventeen thousand nine forty eight ninety. but she also purchased a lift kit which was 535.60 and wheel spacers for 85.99 wheels for 905.88 and tires for $1,271. So those things added together were $2,798, which brings your grand total to 
and she really wanted to spend 20000 but I don't think she was planning on spending that on the tires, wheels, and all that. So really, she could have got the Jeep for a little less than 18000 if she would have just kept it stock. But nobody wants to keep the Jeep stock, <laughs> especially once you start working on them and think, man, if I could just add this, I could, it would look like this. And, and this is going to look really cool when it is done, pretty much. So uh, that's the breakdown. There it is, guys. One more complete project. Uh, feels great. I just checked out the four wheel drive and it works good. So, the only thing we got left to do is get the uh, spare tire mounted on. We're still waiting on the, you have to have a spacer to put on here to move the spare tire up so it doesn't hit this, and, and or up so it doesn't hit this, and out so it doesn't hit this. So, that's ordered. Everything else is done. So, turned out great. I hope Beth likes it. And we're going to call that a wrap for this episode. So if you guys enjoyed this quick build or long-term build, but we didn't do a whole lot of episodes on it because we were doing Paul's Jeep and it's almost the same thing. So if you guys like this, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe uh, button down there and we'll catch you on the next one. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. See you guys next week. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.